Good evening. This is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous. I am here sitting outside of a baseball stadium at a baseball game tonight. A lot of uh, mediators come together once a year and go to a baseball game. And it's a great night to be here. But of course, it's also Friday night. So I wanted to come and speak with you for just a little bit. Tonight, I wanted to talk about self-sabotage. Now, I'm not sure why baseball would inspire this topic, but it has, because I know how critically important it is that we do this to ourselves and shoot ourselves in the foot. So I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about the how, I wanna talk about the why, and I wanna give you some tools to make sure that you are not doing it. So self-sabotage, how do we do that? There are many ways that we sabotage ourselves. And I know right now we feel down enough. We feel like the world's against us, the legal, uh, legal system's against us, our former spouse is against us, the world is against us, finances are against us. So the last thing we need right now is for us to be against us. So how do we do that? How do we self-sabotage ourselves? Well, there's several ways. One of them is we don't take risk. So without making risk, taking risk, our lives will not change. We will be stuck exactly where we are. So we are sabotaging ourselves by not stepping out and taking risk to create that new life. Another way is we may be believing lies about ourselves. We may be hearing gossip and believing that gossip is true. Those are ways in which we self-sabotage. Our self-sabotage, it's up here. So we have to get a handle on that. So when we hear gossip, we need to mentally be strong. We need to pray about it and say, God, show me truth in the midst of many lies. So we also look for excuses. Well, I'm not going to go out tonight. I'm not going to try anything new because the kids need me or I'm just too busy. Well, those are excuses. Instead of stepping out and starting to create our new life, we can be giving plenty of excuses. And I get it. There are plenty of excuses, reasons to be had, right? There's no money. The kids need us. We're very busy. We're working too much. We are tired. We give all of those excuses. And yet we really need to be beginning to form, to get a vision for what our new life is going to look like. Another way in which we sabotage ourselves is fear. We are afraid. We're afraid of failing, that the things that we try will cause us to fail and we'll feel rejected again and we'll be dejected, feel dejected again. So these are one of the ways in which we can self-sabotage. I know that we're afraid, but we still have to move forward in creating a new life. We may even be afraid of success. What happens if this works? It's so unfamiliar to me. I don't know what to do with this. And therefore I'm afraid. So we're gonna self-sabotage, we're gonna do nothing, which is really hurting us in the long run. Another way we self-sabotage is we don't have the discipline that we need to move forward in our life. We don't have that structure that we need to be taking those steps, deciding what our goals are, and then making, taking the steps to make it happen. We're procrastinating. Another way we self-sabotage, we procrastinate. We put it off. We know what we need to do, but we don't do it. That's self-sabotaging us. The sooner we get started, the sooner we can get where we want to go. And the sooner we can know what tweaks we need to make in the choices and the actions that we step forward in. Another way we self-sabotage, which is rather obvious, I would think, and that is by neglecting ourselves. We're not taking care of ourselves. We're not taking care of our body. We're not taking care of our mind. We're not taking care of our spirit. And in doing that, we are hurting ourselves. We're slowing down the process of growth. 
So those are some of the ways in which we self-sabotage. And I know that there are more. I'm sure you can think of ways where you've seen other people or yourself sabotage your life. And um, what I mean by that is, is like trying to run a race and tying your own feet or the, the common phrase of shooting yourself in the foot. All of those ways in which we are stopping ourselves from moving forward, we're staying stuck. There are so many ways we can stay stuck. We're not going to stay stuck. We are going to move through this process to get to the other side of it, to build our beautiful life. So how do we stop self-sabotaging? That's a mouthful. How do we stop self-sabotaging? Number one, we have to identify how are we doing it to ourselves. Maybe it's the, um, the inner talk, the, the voice in our head that we are listening to and believing. There's so many ways. I just gave you a whole list. Is there something from this list that I just gave to you? Or is there another way in which you are self-sabotaging? You're hurting yourself in healing and moving forward and developing and creating that new life. So identify how and stop and think as you look at your life, what's stopping me right now? What's hurting me? And I'm not talking about other people. I know people are doing, can be doing some crazy things in our life. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you, the self-sabotage that you are doing. So identify how, how you're self-sabotaging and then consider why. Why am I doing this to myself? Why am I doing this to myself? That is a huge question. And when we find the answer, we can begin to heal and to move forward through it. Why are we doing this? Are we punishing ourselves? Do we think I should be punished because I'm going through this divorce? Or maybe we just don't believe that we should have anything good. Wow, that's a sad statement, isn't it? That you would think that you don't deserve a good life, that you shouldn't have a good life. You should have a good life. You should, and you can, and you will. But it takes intention of working through it. So find out that why. Why are you self-sabotaging? Is it the fear? If it is a fear, what are you afraid of? The more you can articulate it, the more you can write that down. And all of this information is in my book, Suddenly Single, Building Your Future After Divorce, which connect with me and I'll set it, send it to you. A very inexpensive book. It's like 10 bucks from christianbooks.com. So we go through all of these questions in, in greater detail. So the why, because you're punishing yourself, because you don't feel that you should have a good life, that you're not worthy of a good life, you're not good enough to have a good life. All those lies that we tell ourselves that really stop us from moving forward and having that beautiful life that we want. So we're going to figure out the how we're doing it. We're going to figure out the why we're doing it. And then we are going to begin identifying ways in which we can move forward and change our behavior. I want to challenge yourself. I want you to challenge yourself. How can I change my behavior? How can I learn new coping skills? Because we're, this is how we're, we are reacting in our mind and in our life. We are reacting in such a way that it's hurting us. So how can we learn new coping skills? How can we learn new ways to approach our life, to approach moving forward, being healed, creating that beautiful life? Where can we change that? Now, many times I do one-on-one -on -one coaching when it comes to this. So if you can identify it, I'd be more than happy to email with you, to talk with you and just help you work through how to get through this. Now, I'm a divorce coach. I'm not a counselor, even though my education is in counseling. 
but I know the process. Or you may even want to go to a counselor, sit down with them and say, help me figure out how I'm self-sabotaging, help me figure out why I'm doing it, and then help me find new ways in which to cope and to deal with all of the things that I am dealing with. We need to learn those skills of, um, of what we're afraid of and how to deal, how to deal with the fears that we have and those obstacles that are stopping us from moving forward. And you know, it's really valuable right now, especially that we work to understand how incredibly important we are and how valued we are. And for many of you, I get it. You feel so torn down right now and you don't know how to build yourself up. Sometimes that takes counsel. Sometimes that takes some, some group work and that's certainly what we work on in the group of, of developing that in the section moving forward in Divorce Support Anonymous. You need help building yourself up because you have been torn down. You've used so much energy over the past years of trying to keep this marriage or survive in this marriage. And now that you're going through divorce, you need help to be built up. This is not something that you're going to naturally uh, see happen in your life and in your heart and in your mind. We all need help working through this and dealing with this. Um, so let me just say about the value of you that God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son. Don't take that lightly. Consider how precious your son or daughter are to you. Would you give them up for someone else? I highly doubt that. And yet God loved you so much that his son willingly, willingly came after you, sought you, pursued you to bring you into a new life. So when you ever question your value, go back to that point. Even if you can't feel it right now, find those scriptures and hold on to that thought. Let me leave you with three points, three points. Number one, self-compassion. As you go through this journey, as you see the self-sabotaging, don't beat yourself up because you're beating yourself up. Be compassionate to yourself. Find out why and how you're doing it so that you can change that behavior. Self-faith. You have to start believing in you because there is a life on the other side of this and you have all you need to create a great life. It doesn't have to be money. doesn't have to be status. It simply has to be the faith in yourself that you can plow through this and get to the other side and develop that beautiful life. How do I know it's possible? Because I saw it in my life and I've seen it in hundreds of people's lives after they went through divorce as I worked with them, counseled them, coached them, worked with them in the support group. And number three is self-promotion. You get out there. Watch the words you speak. You start talking positive about yourself. Now is the time to change those, not only the mindset, but the words that are coming out of our mouth. So let me tell you again, three points, self-compassion, faith in yourself. Number three, self-promotion. Let's start talking positive words, positive things, so we can begin to move forward, rebuild, and create that beautiful life. I know it's possible. Join us for a virtual online group or a local group if you're in Grand Rapids. A new one's beginning September 9th. We are currently on only week number two in the virtual group. So you are more than welcome to join us. I'll bring you up to speed. Would love to have you. Don't go through divorce alone. You'll end up self-sabotaging yourself. You need the support. Connect with me. I would be more than happy to sit down, talk with you, have a cup of coffee if you're local. Let's get this healing started. Time's wasting. Okay, I'm going back to the baseball game. I hope you have a great evening, a good weekend. Connect with me next Friday and throughout the week. DivorceSupportAnonymous.com or through this Facebook page. Take care.